Greetings Pro Guides family, my name is Stray and I just wanted to welcome you back to another great video for all those looking for tips and tricks to climb. With Valorant coming out fairly soon, you'll want to be as prepared as you can to prove that you deserve to be Valorant. We'll be sharing with you 5 tips on how to carry those teammates that just don't seem to be doing enough. Hope you guys have been squatting because things are about to get heavy, and by that, I mean your teammates. Before we jump into this video, we have our question of the day, is Valorant ready to go live so soon? Is there anything you would change such as any buffs or nerfs before the game goes live? For me, I would like to see Viper, Jet, and Omen buffed a little bit more at launch. Currently in the meta, their abilities are still a little bit lacking in consistency. Some reworks or buffs in the near future would be excellent towards helping their viability. Let us know in the comment section below. Speaking about buffs, if you're looking to buff up your gameplay, I'd advise you to check out our website ProGuides.com using the link below. We have a brand new feature called InstaPro which provides unlimited 24-7 on-demand coaching from the best of the best. These coaches have countless hours of experience from multiple different gaming backgrounds that are all dedicated towards your gaming success. So don't miss out on this opportunity to see huge improvements to your rank and rank up now using the link below. With that being said, let's get into the video. Have you ever been in a situation where you're working at a certain area of the map just minding your own business when BAM! You just get shot and killed from behind? Simmering with rage and seething aggression, you're wondering to yourself, WHAT ARE MY TEAMMATES WATCHING? Before you get ready to type in full caps locks with disparaging comments towards your teammates, I want you to think why you got killed from behind. And the answer to that, my friends, is going to be our first tip, which is map awareness. Map awareness is a vital part of any tactical shooter and with Valorant, it's no different. Knowing where your teammates are and where enemies could be is the first step in carrying in any game. Since your teammates are probably not communicating everything, using your minimap to your advantage is crucial. Unlike CSGO, Valorant's minimap can show things other than just your teammates' positions. It can also display things like which way your teammates are facing, abilities like Viper's Wall, Brimstone and Omen Smokes, as well as any enemies revealed by abilities or seen by allies. For how to optimize your minimap effectively, check out our in-depth settings guide where we give you the settings from top pro players. Always keep checking your minimap. When you know you're in the clear and not going to be in a gunfight anytime soon, keep glancing over at your minimap for information your team may not be conveying to you. Remember, all abilities that do damage will not show up on the minimap unless it's an ultimate ability. So do not think just because nothing shows up on the map, there isn't any action. When you have especially bad teammates that never communicate, it can sometimes be best to rotate and gamble sack off of the information you get from the minimap. For instance, if you see Breach is using his Rolling Thunder on a bombsite, it's most likely that there's going to be a commitment onto that bombsite. If you see a Sova use a Recon Bolt in an area that your teammates aren't in, they're most likely going to push that area and stack the place your team is going to based on the information they've gathered. Just like in League of Legends, the minimap provides crucial information, but it's you who has to process that information and play accordingly. For example, if you're playing on Bind and you glance over on the minimap and see that none of your teammates are playing showers because, you know, sweaty gamers don't like to shower, you should take initiative and go position yourself during the buy phase to go clear out showers so your teammates won't get flanked by a guy pushing showers. One person flanking is all it takes for either side to lose the round. Either the person flanking gets a ton of info and maybe even a kill, or he gets killed, and the defending side loses a huge portion of the map. If you are playing a high priority pick, try to communicate with your team that somebody else should hold a certain position for a push, and after a while recall your teammates to come group for an execution on the desired bomb site. If you're the person holding an angle, remember to walk back to your team when grouping. It's very important that the enemy team does not get information that you're running away from the bomb site they are holding. Giving that kind of information away leads to your team running into a 4 man stack and getting decimated by a flurry of bullets. Our second point is one that might come across pretty obvious, which is winning your gunfights. This is a first person shooter. This isn't a first person uh, misser. Yeah, you get my point. Anyways, have you ever had a moment where you lost a gunfight and then the guy who killed you cleaned up your teammates? Well, that is the butterfly effect for you. If you won your gunfight against that one person, that person wouldn't have gotten a 5k and aced your team and put it on reddit, meaning that player was just better in mechanical shooting ability and deserved to win that round. If you think you are the better player and deserve to win, prove it. And you can prove it. 
by using your brain to play smarter while using correct mechanics. Make sure you understand fundamental concepts like counter strafing to peak angles, angle advantage, map rotations, and commonly played places. You also want to make sure that before you go into any rank sessions, you're warmed up and ready to click some heads. You want to make sure that you are near top form before you jump into ranked, meaning you should be warming up 5 to even 30 minutes in the practice range with flicks, crosser placements, counter strafing, recoil control, and your spray pattern. If you need more help with aiming, stay subscribed because we have a new aiming guide coming out very, very soon. If you want to win more games, make sure you put in the time to set yourself up for it. You don't have to be as cracked as someone like Shroud, but make sure you are able to finish off opponents in appropriate amount of time. But being as cracked as Shroud would help, I suppose. Going into our next point is communication. Just like in real life, proper communication is super important. You are talking to real human beings over the internet, even though sometimes the plays they make don't necessarily feel human. That being said, treat everyone with respect and kindness, even if they aren't reciprocating that same kindness. Utilize whoever your team has. Do you guys have smokes, flashes, or intel gathering? Remember to communicate with your teammates. Your teammates won't be able to read your minds unless you speak it. Ask Brimstone to smoke heaven, and then your breach to flash through the deep fall box after. Maybe even ask for a Sova recon bolt on site. And voila, you have a proper execution onto a bomb site. Just remember to have your gun out if you're telling your teammates to do this. You don't want everybody to have their utility out and get Ferrari peaked by a lucky random that has godly CSGO timing and makes you want to pull your hair out. Don't mold over randoms. This brings us to our fourth point. Know your role. Who are you playing and what are your strengths? Valorant does a great job categorizing each agent under a specific type of playstyle. Duelists look to engage and fight enemies. When they get 2 kills, their signature ability resets so it rewards fighting. Initiators focuses on gathering information and intels where enemies are located at. And Sentinels, they are very strong defensive agents focus on slowing down pushes and holding choke points. Last one is controllers. They're very good at obstructing sidelines and supporting the team. Now you might be thinking that playing only duelist carry would be the right thing to do, but you would be sadly mistaken. Any agent in Valorant can carry a game if you're good with their abilities and know how to properly use them. Remember, Valorant is a team game and having a good team composition is important. If your teammate decide to insta-lock Jet and Raze, it might not be a good idea to pick another duelist. However, if you are playing a duelist like Phoenix, try to play more ahead of your teammates and lead your team into a site by entry fragging. Opening up a site with a first blood pick is huge and creates a lot of space for your team to push in. If you're playing Sage on defense, try to time your abilities out for when they are actually pushing rather than wasting them in the first 30 seconds. This does not mean to save them for the entire round, but if you get certain sound cues like a lot of footsteps or smokes coming down, I would probably say it's a good time to use your utility. On offense, you need to stay alive as long as you can. Giving heals to your teammates and resurrecting dead teammates when your ultimate is available is crucial to your team's success. Sage is pretty much the only agent that should bait excessively. Make sure to glance at the top of your screen every so often so you can see if a teammate needs a heal. If you're playing an initiator like Sova, make sure you spend extra time in custom games learning lineups for each individual maps. If you want to learn the best Sova arrows, make sure to check out our top 25 Sova lineups in the description below. A well-practiced Sova can single-handedly carry a game through good recon bolts and picks with his ultimate. You either see the enemy with your recon bolt or you tag them with your drone and then watch them dance with your ultimate, Hunter's Fury. For a controller like Omen or Brimstone, make sure you practice your smokes in custom games to see what good angles to cut off and if there are any gaps in the smoke. Even the slightest gap could lead to multiple teammates dying and they will let you know that it is your fault. And you wouldn't want that, would you? If you know what role you like playing, make sure you do it well. Otherwise, you might be the weak link on the team and that'll make both your teammates and your rank hate you.
And there you go. Take these tips and stash them somewhere safe in your brain to be put to use when the live version of Valorant comes out. We hope these tips helped you. And if you want more in-depth and detailed explanation, as always, check out ProGuides.com. There are multiple knowledgeable and friendly coaches online that would love to go further into these topics we discuss in our videos and are always dedicated towards your improvement. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. That'll be all, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Pro Guys. May you not have any instant lock jets in your ranking and wish you all the best. Stray signing out. Peace.